Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Oak Bytes Blogger Z and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I fought the troll Right, hello and welcome everybody. It's 2012 and we're finally back for our first episode of the second series. I say first episode, this is more of a a pilot to the second series of the show which is going undergoing a lot of changes mainly through feedback from uh, people kind enough listening to us and uh, dropping us an email or two. So without further ado, we have Roy here uh, and Rusty, and we're going to have a little chat about a few of the topics in the news. It's going to be a slightly shorter show because we're not going to be covering any music, which was another point which a lot of people said about the show being far too long and the music maybe not being to the taste of everybody. So we're going to give it a run without any music, see if you can listen to our dulcet tones for the next 40 minutes without switching off. And I'll pass you over to Roy, who's going to start us off with the first topic of the day. Well, I think one of the uh, main stories, one one of the main themes we cover usually is to do with uh, free software and Linux. I think you both kind of agree on that. Uh, So Linux 3.2 was released a few days ago, uh, I think a couple of days ago. Uh, And Android uh, has been kind of merged to an extent with Linux in the sense that they, I think they backported a few things into the kernel, which is good news. Uh, and Android boasts the sales figures or the activation figures, something like, uh, I think it's 700,000 a day now, something like that, um, which is really good news, I mean, especially considering the fact this is the main uh, Linux-based platform for phones that we have out there at the moment. I, I, for the moment, and it's, I mean, it makes sense for that merging to go back, because the Linux Foundation for a while now has been adamantly supporting Android. I mean, it's even one of the few things they actually offer classes on. Um, but it, it'll be interesting to see how that winds up working out with uh, WebOS going open, too. You know, we don't really have a clue how that's going to work at this point. Yeah. Um, I think the Linux Foundation is very strict about support, and uh, it used to be Mego, and now they actually rebrand to Tizen. Um, I know I, I was doing, I was working with a colleague on a redirect to a Tizen website, and uh, Actually, originally it used to be the Limo uh, Foundation, but the Linux Foundation was mostly supporting. Originally, it used to be called LIPS, uh, being a, a bit of an acronym, which then got merged into Limo, as far as I can recall. Uh, so that was Bill, uh, what's his name? I can't remember his last name, but this actually came from some of the people who used to be involved in the OSDL back in the days. And they were counting on trying to incorporate the proper LSB based type of uh, LSB compatible system at the time. And Android wasn't exactly that. It's mostly uh, it's mostly the shop that Google runs, and uh, and obviously uh, Dalvik in the middle. So they want to be a more to be a more kind of Linux oriented system. That's what they want. Yeah. Well, and I think people at Google have realized from the marketing point that any splintering from that is not beneficial to Android at all. <laughs> I think at some stages they actually thought about going a bit more open, more closed source or proprietary to some extent, uh, but that wasn't very useful from the point of view of PR, so they had to always try to ensure that they release the code as soon as possible. Uh, and the other thing they had to try and ensure that they do is the whole thing they all issue with the patents. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's going on with IBM, and to be honest nobody knows except those two companies, but IBM keeps passing patents to Google. I'm not sure they even sell them, but they reassign them or reassign the ownership of the patents, I think, so that Google will have some deterrence against all kinds of patent trolls and even the major companies that's attacking them. I, I, I personally think that's a case of mutual, that's a case of mad if ever there was, because IBM is as dependent on Linux at this point as Google has made themselves uh, and all the things in that, so if somebody comes after anything on either of them, they are going to share rather well because if if the other one holds 
what could be used for defense, and they don't pass it over, it then sets the court ruling precedent that makes it ten times as expensive for the other ones to defend themselves. Yeah, I mean, but both companies are now members of the uh, Open Invention Network, but then again, Oracle is there as well, and Oracle has been aggressive about it. And I, I, I still personally think, and the more time goes on, the more evidence I see that it's, it seems as the Oracle is mostly uh, Derry Ellison, in this case, helping his friend uh, Steve Jobs. Uh, because it, uh, they actually consider themselves to be best friends, and Oracle actually choosing to take those patents and attack it doesn't make any business sense, really. Uh, it's mostly, I think, to do with iOS, and iOS being very uh, very much in danger, and, 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 and Apple being very openly frantic about it, you know, with lawsuits and everything. Even now, the tablets are being affected by the Android uh, markets, the number of applications growing. I mean, the one observation I would make, and I see this debate raging on, on Newsnet and on plethora of forums online, people are very keen to compare Android to iOS and or app or the and the iPhone and they seem to forget the iPhone is one product and Android yeah, is spread yeah. on. Yeah, honestly, I would compare Android more. Sadly, and this is not me, Scott, but more what Microsoft's going to start doing uh, into this year, next year, and. WebOS, because WebOS is in the process of going open source, and which will mean uh, people who don't want to use Android will probably, if it goes open source properly, use WebOS, because WebOS has some interesting features that Android doesn't, despite having a much smaller support base at this time. Uh, and if you really want to compare them, those are the ones you should be comparing against each other, for the reason you're saying, because it's, you know... I mean Apple keeps its cards close to its chest now, regardless of, and I'll probably be accused here of uh, promoting Apple, and I'll, I'll uh, say categorically that I don't personally uh, have uh, or prefer Apple products at all, uh, but Apple play their cards close to the chest, and when you look at, if we were to compare, say, the HTC Desire with an iPhone, that'd be a fair comparison, we could compare the sales figures, because that's one phone, one platform. But with Android being on so many different platforms, of course it's going to be more purchases because Apple's got its own market. And they have a hell of a markup on their products, and that's why they're doing so well. I haven't got the figures to hand, but I think Apple's had a very good Christmas in terms of profits, whilst its, it's general sales might not have been... Yeah, Samsung's Apple. number one now in terms of sales. I just read an article about it today, so but Apple the, keeps dropping in the year. Of it. Yeah, I mean, okay, it depends if you... Count money or yeah. number of phones. I mean that, that that's what's important. Uh, uh, yeah, and you, we can get into the uh, and speaking of phones, <laughs> <laughs> that is not an iPhone. I hasten to add. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's it's one of those unfair comparisons. I mean, I've I've got no particular love for for Apple, but it it, it would be far fairer to compare Windows Phone Seven with Android uh, because that's in the same situation whereby it can appear on any phone or a majority of phones. Well, and it's, it's, sorry, okay. Thomas. What I was going to say, it's, uh, the other thing is, uh, the reality is, it, it's also not a fair comparison in terms of uh, evolvability, because the reality is, due to, like you saying, them keeping stuff close to their chest, uh, there's basically going to be, when we reach the point, which a number of people are talking about, of the transition point from these slaty, phony devices becoming our computing devices, which whether you love or hate, is is going to happen at some point in the next two to five years. But when that happens, these mobile platforms are going to have to make a transition to supporting productivity apps and applications that actually let you get something more than killing the evil piggies with the angry birdies. Uh, at, at which point, you were depending how limited you were, uh, I mean, the reality is developers, uh, why they may like at times the profitability there, they hate that they don't have access to every single thing. And that's one of the reasons Android took off so well in business, because businesses without having to go through any middleman or anyone else could simply hire somebody, say, I need a productivity app that does this thing, and I need it to run on this. And the developer could make it for them. They can't do that over there. Now, it'll be interesting when we have more than one big player that allows that in the next two years, but, I mean, that's what you need to be comparing. Well, sticking on the subject of phones just very briefly, this is something I came across, I think it was earlier this morning when I was reading some of the news, and it was about 
Now, I hope I've got this right because I haven't got the article in front of me. Uh, Siri, the uh, voice activated helper for the iPhone. Now, apparently, that's doing what uh, it was alleged Windows Phone 7 did uh, about a year or so ago, which was uh, gobbling up data. I don't know if you heard anything about that over there, Russell.